Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Welcome to the front lines, kid. Today, I've been challenged to show you folks how to build an effective fighting force. But, I've been told I'm not allowed to use battle value, and I'm not allowed to rely heavily on tonnage for my reasoning either. In other words, I'm gonna have to teach you how to do it the way I do it. By eyeballing it. Sit tight while I patch you into the satellite link. Satellite link established. Now, if you look downrange, you'll see several of our graduates out practicing maneuvers. Before we go too far down that road, first let's talk about what makes up an average lance in the inner sphere. Your typical lance makeup is going to consist of two heavy mechs, one medium, and usually a light scout to round things off. Sometimes your light mech will be more of a shooter than a looker, but that's just the standard model. This kind of lance structure is often good for a command lance, but tends to fall short in the performance department if more specialized groups are called for. This is because a command lance is often trying to cover a lot of different bases, and what you wind up with is a lance of mechs that are all pretty good at one thing, but the force as a whole excels at none of these things. Because there aren't usually multiple mechs in a group like this that all do or facilitate the same thing, you'll have to hope you've covered enough of what you need to cover to get you from point A to point B in a fight, and that's not always the best of places to be in. To avoid this problem, the first thing you need to understand about force building is roles. Satellite link established. Each of our pilots on the field today is a specialist in a certain type of combat role. And what that role is going to be is based on the particular ride they've chosen. Some of our pilots like to stick and move, and some like it hot. The important thing to understand is that regardless of their flying style, each of their machines is placed in a force to do a very specific type of job. Shrapnel here is a spider pilot. Spiders are scout mechs. They aren't the heaviest of hitters, but they sure are fast. Shrapnel. Yes, sir. Show them that lickety split action. We're in the pipe, five by five. I like to keep shrapnel and their spider around because together, they're real good at finding out what's going on on the other side of the battlefield without me having to go see for myself. Can't fend off much more than a squad of infantry, but can be awfully distracting to the enemy, buzzing around and stinging folks like that. Information is ammunition. Thank you, shrapnel. The next step up from a scout is what's known as a striker. It's still hard to pop their collar, but they'll be heavier and can carry more offensive power than a scout mech would. For example, check out our top ace in the Jenner there. External camera engaged. A striker's job is to get in, deliver a painful burst of fire to an enemy or a target of interest, and then still have enough speed to get out without being wrecked for their troubles. How's the meter reader, Ace? Moving like grease lightning, Skipper. That's what we like to hear. Striker mechs get in, drop a few shots, and bounce before they get tossed in the meat grinder. It's easy to confuse strikers with skirmishers, though, so I think I'll need... Lancer next. External camera engaged. Lancer here, locked and loaded. A popular choice in this role is the Wolverine, like Lancers. Skirmishers try to balance speed, armor, and offense to get as much out of each of these factors as they can. That'll typically result in heavier machines, but don't let that fool you. These things are still fast enough to get around and make it where they're going, and when they get there, you're probably going to be looking down the barrel of bigger guns than you would on a striker. What do we always say? In combat, speed is life. You go slow, you die. Remember, bigger doesn't always mean better. You won't find machines too often that can do everything and still keep their heat levels down enough to avoid problems. When you want patently decent speed with a little extra firepower and protection, skirmishers are your type of unit. To round out what I call the five S's, we have snipers and support, as in fire support. In both of these roles, the pilot's job isn't to get up close and personal. Their job is to give the enemy a black eye or a shellacking from a distance. You read me, Tex? External camera engaged. I'll see you fuckers later. Texas Awesome is a good example of why I don't use the term missile boat when I mean fire support. 
Support comes in all different shapes and sizes, so it's important not to pigeonhole yourself into thinking fire support is only for people who want everyone to fight in the shade. Now the real meat and potatoes of any force are called brawlers and juggernauts. Brawlers are the beat stick of any fighting force, while juggernauts are only when maximum violence is what's on the table. External camera engaged. Brawlers are nominal speed, but full of firepower, and they've typically got enough armor to hang around for a while. You'd better settle in for a beating either way though, because brawlers tend to get as good as they give in the long run. They're the pilots who are in front of the enemy's guns more often than almost any other. Finally, juggernauts are the big bad voodoo daddies. The mop-up crew, or the crew you send in when you want to crush your enemy under your heel. They aren't fast, but they don't need to be either. When you carry the armor of five mechs, what's one more medium laser, you know? Have fun storming the castle! Remember the command model from earlier? That being the standard model, what say we build off of that just to make life easy on ourselves, huh? Later on, you can mix and match and see what you like to your heart's content, but this'll give you an idea of how to start. When putting together a lance, the first thing I ask myself is what I want. Well, what I want is based on what I already have. If what I already have is nothing, then the sky's the limit and I can start wherever I want without having to worry about it. So let me see here. Ranger. Satellite link established. What's shaking, boss? How would you like to pull Lance lead? Absolutely. Now what I want next is based on what I have. I've got me a ground pounder, a machine that can take a licking and keep on ticking. Kind of what you're looking for in a command mech, am I right? So, I started with a beat stick, now I gotta think about how I wanna back it up. What do I want? Another beat stick? No, then I'm going heavy in the one direction, and I'll only have a medium and a light left to work with for support. I could go with a trench bucket and a light support roll. No, you know what? Let's get medieval. Satellite link established. Can I take your order? I see you're close. Form up on Ranger's right, your fire support today. Hang on, we're in for some chop. Keep your arms and legs inside this ride until it comes to a full and complete stop. All right, now we're cooking with gas. A beat stick and some missiles that jump. Now what? Do I want to be a nuisance or do I want to keep ground pounding? You know, let's do it this way. Maybe I can get a little bit of both here. Something that hits the spot. Chili! Satellite link established. You want to turn up the heat? Bring that crazy griffin of yours up to Ranger's left for me. Let's burn. External camera engaged. We've got all missiles in this lance so far, so let's give them a scout mech instead of a dedicated shooter. This way, if any indirect fire is called for, they'll have some eyes in the sky. You did well earlier, Shrapnel. Wanna be the scout today? Satellite link established. <laughs> you bet. In transit, HQ. External camera engaged. Now, I have a beat stick that can really soak up the damage, some fire support to help him bulldoze his way through, a fast unit on the outside to snipe and steal attention so the larger two can work, and a scout to provide telemetry and maybe even get a shot off here and there. And that's pretty much the way I do it if I'm eyeballing it with no BV or any heavy reliance on tonnage. If I want a fire support lance, I have the same conversations. Missiles are energy. What do I want? What do I have? Etc. You're looking for things that work well together that are geared toward accomplishing a single task. The only way to really know if these things work together the way you think they will is if you put the pilots together and let them do what they came there to do. 
If you have a combination that works well together, you'll see that in the performance of the team. If not, start over and try again. The knowledge is something that only comes from experience, and experience comes from the doing. So don't be afraid to take your favorite examples of these mechs and group them together to see what works. You might find yourself surprised more often than not. Alright Battletech fans, I sure hope you've found something useful here to get you going down the path to building your own lances and companies. The more you learn about each type of machine, the better you'll get at picking them. Thank you to all our patrons, all our collaborative partners for this episode, and thank you all for watching. If you like what you've seen here and I've earned your subscription, do us a big favor and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you can see all our upcoming videos when they drop. I'm Tuck Davian, wishing you a great many hours at the game table, and I'll see you all soon right here on the Space Lane. Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.